Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. Um, as always, we got five albums to go through. Not really much to say, so let's just go through the albums. Also, my cat's here. We start in Glasgow, Scotland for Bleed From Within and their sixth album, Shrine. Now, I'm not overly familiar with them. I knew of their name before this, and the only album I'd listened to by them before this was their album in 2020, the album Fracture. And I remember I liked Fracture. I definitely like this one a lot more. I'm giving it an A. Just absolute balls to the wall, heavy pacing. Just love the fury on display here. Really like that they have more guitar solos as well. The breakdowns are really, really great. This is just some really solid groove leaning uh, metalcore. Just super fun. But yeah, it's honestly just a really good slice of some heavy metalcore. I really enjoyed this one. The lyrics talking about themes of mental health was uh, really, really quite nice. And some good political stuff here and there as well. The performances are pretty solid. I like the production. Sounds clean as hell. Nuclear Blast can provide. And uh, yeah, really solid pacing as well. So go check this one out. Next we go to Krosno, Poland for Decapitated and their eighth album, Cancer Culture. Now this is a band that's actually been around since um, the mid-90s. They broke up in 2007, reformed in 2009, so it wasn't really a long-lasting breakup. And this is their first album in five years, so that might also contribute to why I'm not too familiar with them. Also the fact that they're a metal band from a foreign country, and they are very much a death metal band. And I will admit, while Cancer Culture is a great title for an album, and functionally decent as a metal album, I'm only giving it a C plus. It didn't really do a lot special for me. Like the band sound pretty good. Their uh, guitarist, uh, whose nickname is uh, Vog, I'm said Wog, Vog with uh, two G's. He's pretty solid as well. Uh, there's some good drumming, but yeah, the lyrics are a bit too bleak in tone for me. I didn't like all the typical doomy gloomy stuff. Um, I feel like the album takes itself a bit too seriously. The production's got some good things going for it as well. You know, just a lot of the riffs aren't the most complicated thing for death metal it just feels very by the numbers at points but uh yeah it's serviceable it's fine it is the lowest grade i've given this episode as well but yeah it's just it, there were some areas that could have been improved especially considering it was five years since their last one which i think might be the longest gap in albums maybe if they drop another one within somewhere within the next five years it might turn me around on them but yeah this one really didn't do a lot for me. Next we go to Richmond, Virginia for Gwa and their 15th album of the New Dark Ages. Now I've known of Gwa's reputation for a long time now. This is my first album by them. It's also their third without former scene, uh, singer, singer David Brocky, may he rest in peace. And their third with current singer who used to be the band's bassist, um, Beefcake the Mighty. Well, sorry, Beefcake the Mighty he was. Now he's Blowthar, but his real name's Michael Bishop. And I'm giving this one a B. It's a fucking weird album, but it's a very fun kind of weird, which is just something that... Oh, it's just something that um, Guar are known for, to my knowledge. You know, they're just known for weird stuff. They have their own mythos around the characters that they play. And, uh, yeah, they play that up really, really well. There's just tons of stupid stuff ridiculously over-the-top and satirized in the lyrics. Um... The production's actually quite good as well, which I wasn't expecting. There's some interesting little tricks, like they provide auto-tune on one of the songs for a comedy effect, and it works, you know? It's so strange. It's such a weird group, right? But I couldn't hide the smile on my face, and at the same time the stank I did at the occasional really good breakdown. It is a long album, yes, but uh, it's got a lot of fun packed into it, so I can highly recommend it, and hence the be great. Next up, we kind of have a debuting thing, Ibaraki and their first album, Roshoman, or should I say, his first album. Ibaraki is the side project of, uh, sorry, Ibaraki is the side project of Matt Heafy, who is known as being the lead singer and guitarist of Trivium. This is a solo project of his, which was produced by someone named Isan, um, who is known for his work with a band called Emperor, I think. I'm giving this album a B+. I actually quite enjoyed it. It's more of a black metal leaning album. It also includes a lot of Japanese elements, which is sort of intentional because the album is something that explores Matt Heafy's Japanese roots and uh, it tells a lot of stories, it draws from a lot of Japanese uh, myth and folklore to really tell that story and as someone who's a big fan of the game Sekiro, good work, actually like I did deep dive a bit into the lyrics and find out what certain things meant, like all the song titles are in Japanese. One thing I think halted back though is I wish there were more singing in Japanese. There's not a lot of actual singing in Japanese, most of it's in English, but I think this album would have benefited more if it were in the native tongue that Matthew was trying to explore. But still, his vocals are still great, obviously. His clean singing has, you know, I was going to say it's improved, but it's always been pretty good. Um, he's got always had such a presence with his voice. Um, really good production as well. 
like the structuring again bit long but still quite not uh, quite a lot of nice stuff packed into it i don't know why i keep looking up at the page that says gua the wikipedia page i don't know but yeah uh this was a pretty solid album and i do hope that matt continues with this project because i want to see where he takes it next maybe writing more of a full rounded concepts around Japanese myth, that would be pretty cool. But still, really solid album, so yeah, give it a listen. And finally, we round off in Phoenix, Arizona for a debut album, The Venomous Pinks and their first full length titled Vita Mors, which translates to life and death, uh, loosely. So uh, yeah, obviously, this is a debut, I'm not too familiar with them, the earliest thing that I could find that they released was an EP back in 2014, and they've released a couple more EPs and some live stuff since then, I think, but this is their first full length and it's a debut. And I really liked it. I'm also giving this one an A. The guitar work is... Hello. The guitar work is absolutely phenomenal and sharp. And some great guitar solos. We need more guitar solos in this style of punk rock. By the way, all the other albums before this were more metal leaning. This is the only like punk rock album, like leaning album that I've covered for this episode. So I do find that kind of interesting. But yes, the guitar work is great. The guitar solos especially. Like the bass and drum work are also really, really good. I like the performances. I wish I could find the... Mem uh, the band members names because uh that's not really uh, there wasn't a lot of information i could find on that but all three of them did quite well uh pretty solid trio you know lead singer and guitarist bassist drummer all really really good i like the lyrics as well they gave like a positive thing and like trying to brave through the bullshit you see in the world it reminded me a bit of pinch points album and even though it's the shortest album on this video it's like 27 minutes or so um it's still it does have a lot of like the stereotypical short punk songs but even they still have a really good point to them the performances are great i really like the production just absolutely phenomenal work on all fronts i really like this album so i recommend giving this one a go and i'll about do it for this one um before i sign off i do want to give my most recommended because i keep forgetting to do it and there's a very good chance that i'll remember again next month so my most recommended are um possibly bleed from within and the venomous pinks probably the least recommended of all even though i don't actually do least recommended ever is decapitated's new album but i recommend giving all these at least one listen but especially the venomous pinks and bleed from within their new albums are really really good that's what's next from me well tomorrow night um the return of sunset overdrive where we explore the moil rig so i'm really looking forward to doing that and i'll see you all for that the next video will possibly be Sunday, another fight of the night review, if there is one to talk about, and then Monday for a very important vlog update. So, see you all for that. As always, thank you for watching, you're awesome. Bye bye.